Hello, welcome back everybody. Today is the day for the comparison of the running dynamic metrics uh, uh, available in two different devices. Uh, the uh, HRM run uh, chest strap from Garmin and uh, the stride pod. Last year, in collaboration with Adidas, I started to test uh, some shoes using uh, the foot pod to collect uh, the metrics for the uh, running dynamics, which can help you to understand your running form uh, so you can perform better. Let's start with the Garmin device, which is a nut rate monitor uh, chest strap that includes um, the running dynamics as well. So basically, you wear it um, you know, on your chest like a classical heart rate monitor and uh, it will monitor your heart rate uh, and other running dynamics metrics. The stride pod uh, on the other end is uh, this little guy here, usually is called a uh, foot pod because you can attach it on your uh, shoes with a little clip. One of the main differences is that uh, to use a Garmin strap uh, you need uh, uh, your watch to record your uh, training session and uh, you can sync your data uh, up towards the Garmin Connect application. To use the stride pod, you don't need any watch. The foot pod is gonna be automatically activated when you start moving and uh, it will start to record all the metrics and you can sync your data uh, to the stride power center application using your, your phone. The nice feature of uh, the Garmin Connect web application is that you can extend the metrics uh, collected and present them in the application via the HiQ uh, platform, which is the application platform uh, developed for uh, new Garmin devices or new companies to develop a number of different applications and understand uh, the metrics collected, like for instance, the stride pod metrics. Another main difference between these uh, two devices is the price. They are really uh, far each other in terms of price because the Garmin device is available on the market uh, uh, at the price of circa 80 euro and the stride pod is uh, twice uh, this price or even more depending where you buy. For both devices, your pods is not supported and uh, the phone is not required during run. So which are the main differences uh, to make it worth to buy the stride pod in terms of running dynamics? Let's find out. But before to continue, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Most of you guys are not yet subscribed. So please, if you like uh, uh, the video, consider to hit the subscribe button here below and you will make me happy. If you are interested in my trainings, you can also consider to follow me on Strava, where I'm regularly putting all my trainings in and more other details about uh, the shoes I'm reviewing and uh, the test I'm doing. You can find the link in the description below. That being said, let's move on. So basically we understood that they have a kind of different use case. Uh, so the Garmin strap is made originally to monitor the heart rate. Usually you wear it on your uh, chest with a strap and the foot pod to monitor your running dynamics. And you usually put on your uh, shoes with a clip. But with the Garmin HRM run strap, we have both use cases because uh, it's also possible to collect the running dynamics. And this is in one only device. So let's have a look uh, at those metrics to understand uh, if there is any difference. Well, basically looking to them, there are, as you can see here, marked in red. The running power is uh, uh, available only for the stride pod and give you an estimation uh, of the power based on uh, other metrics like cadence, uh, ground contact times, uh, elevation change, etc. Considering the wind uh, uh, detection as well to adjust the power uh, estimate based on the uh, ambient wind. This metric could be better than the base in certain circumstances for giving you an idea of your intensity because it's more responsive. For instance, during any training session. For the traditional interval training on the flat, uh, then using uh, the base is probably best. So basically this indicator is a good estimate of your uh, intensity. In certain cases can be better than uh, the base. Say that, let's move on uh, with the next difference, that is the running form uh, power, which is available only for the stride pod. So basically this is an additional component of the running power relating to vertical oscillation and cadence, but it is also uh, weight dependent. It means that decreasing your form power over time when running at a similar training speeds it's a good indication that you have uh, improved your running uh, uh, economy. So it is one of the methods for measuring uh, your running economy. Let's move on on the third difference, uh, which is the ground contact time balance, which is uh, only available for the Garmin device. 
unfortunately. Ground contact time balance measures uh, your symmetry uh, as you run by monitoring the balance between your left and right foot uh, ground contact time. Uh, I don't know for you guys, but for me, this is one of the most important uh, metrics to check. Uh, the reason why is because it's a way for me to check uh, if I'm changing my running techniques over time, uh, especially during these times uh, that I'm running alone and no one can check my running technique. When I find a considerable uh, difference uh, in the balance, then I usually go to the physiotherapist for a massage, uh, because maybe one of my legs is um, stiffer than the other and I lost a bit of uh, balance, so that I can avoid any injury. It's really pity that uh, the side pod doesn't include such an important metric, but anyway, let's move on uh, with the next difference, that is the stride length. Uh, which is only available for the Garmin device, but uh, not for the stride pod. Another important metric, in my opinion, because it will indicate you if you are uh, starting to hover striding, which occurs when the foot lands in front of your body uh, on the heel. Uh, as you know, uh, it will slow your run and uh, it will cause you uh, injuries, uh, especially in your knees. Increasing the stride length uh, is important for our running uh, performance, but increasing it without the risk of uh, overstriding uh, it's a matter of uh, fit and uh, training and uh, we should really pay attention to uh, check this metric. So once again, it's a really important metric and it's pity that the side pod uh, doesn't have it. Let's move on on the last difference, uh, which is the leg spring stiffness. This metric is only available for the stride pod, which could be a major piece of running economy puzzle. Think of your legs um, as a spring upon which your body uh, bounces. The stiffer the spring, the less energy you must produce to propose yourself forward with each step. This new metric measures the stiffness of the muscles and tendons in your leg. Increases in this metric can indicate economy improvement uh, over time. So basically it's another metric for measuring your running economy. So in the end the study pod has three different uh, more metrics. The running power. Uh, which can give you a, a better idea of your intensity in certain trainings, uh, otherwise you can look at uh, the base metric, and running form power and leg spring stiffness, which uh, can give you uh, a better idea about your running economy. On the other end, the Garmin device has two more metrics, the ground contact time balance and the, the stride length, which can allow you to check your running technique and avoid injuries. Now that we know the main differences, uh, the question is which one of these running dynamics metrics do you prefer and why? Please let me know in the comments below. Personally, if I would uh, need to collect more uh, metrics, I would uh, always prefer to have metrics uh, which allow me to check if my running technique has been changed and correct them as soon as possible to avoid any injury. Because anyway, we already have the metrics uh, which help us to understand how was our performance all along our trainings. So personally, I would go for the HRM brand uh, strap from uh, Garmin. Now my question is, uh, does it work the difference of price for the stride pod? My answer is, I don't know, uh, because there are uh, other factors that uh, should be considered. For instance, uh, the stride pod should be in general more precise in terms of uh, GPS accuracy, especially when you are running in the city, for instance. I found an interesting uh, article about the GPS accuracy of uh, different devices, which uh, give you more insight uh, about this topic, link in the description below. But also for other metrics, also looking in the Garmin uh, Connect portal, overlapping the data collected by both devices, uh, we can anyway notice that uh, uh, there is uh, a difference uh, between the uh, data collected. So which is the most accurate one among uh, these two devices in terms of running dynamics techniques? It seems that the side pod is more accurate than the other sensors reading the articles available online. But maybe um, a test for someone uh, of these measures could be uh, an idea for the next video. Please let me know in the comment below if you would like to compare a particular metric. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, as usual, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.